This program is brought to you by Stanford Hospital and Clinics. Well, thanks so much for coming to see me today at the Stanford Lymphedema Center. I, I know you're a breast cancer survivor, mm -hmm. and I know that you have some lingering concerns about your lymphedema, so I'd love to answer whatever questions you have. Well, thank you, doctor. I, I do have some questions. Um, well, one of them, many of my friends were never warned about the risk of lymphedema before their surgery. Why is that? You know, that's a regrettable fact, but one I think that we have the capacity to understand if we think about it. Unfortunately, first of all, many doctors are very undereducated about the lymphatic system and specifically about the problem of lymphedema. There's even a, a name recognition problem. There are doctors who will say to you, what's that, if you tell them you have lymphedema? And that's unfortunately a reflection on medical education as it's existed for the last 30 or 40 years. Here at Stanford, we're trying to rectify that, and I think nationally there's an increasing awareness. It's a job that patients can help with. Once you learn about lymphedema as a patient or collectively you and your friends, you can help to educate your doctors. They need to learn from you what your experiences are, what you've learned about it, so they're better prepared to deal with their future patients. Another feature, I think, is that, for example, in the setting of breast cancer, Typically, it would be the breast cancer surgeon who might warn mm. you that lymphedema is a risk. But the nature of lymphedema is that it can appear months and years after the surgery. Mm -hmm. And I think the bulk of breast cancer surgeons, in fact, are convinced that it doesn't happen to their patients because they don't see it on their watch. <laughs> it happens later. Yeah. And so they assume mistakenly that it's some problem with surgical technique, that other doctors don't do as good a job or that somehow if, the, if it's done properly as they do it, it doesn't happen. So we need to educate them as well, that sometimes lymphedema is going to happen long after they've stopped following the patient. And it might be the oncologist, the radiation therapist, or even the primary care physician who's the first to hear that the problem has occurred. Okay. It, after surviving breast cancer treatment, surgeries and chemotherapy and all. Then I get lymphedema, and I'm really kind of angry that I have to go through the rest of my life with swelling and, and the, wearing the sleeve and restricting my activities. Um, is there anything you can suggest to help with that? I, I certainly understand the anger, the frustration, uh, and it seems like a, a second punishment uh, after going through so much to get your life back. And what you wanted was your life whole, and mm -hmm. I do understand that. Uh, unfortunately, at the mo moment, the incidence of lymphedema, which we would say maybe is uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of breast cancer survivors, it's a regrettable but necessary price tag that collectively we have to pay to achieve cure. Um, that doesn't make the anger go away, and it doesn't make the mm -hmm. frustration go away. And I think that um, there aren't any simple answers except to say it's important to strive to keep life as normal as possible in the face of the fixed demands that exist to take care of the problem. I think seeking support from your fellow patients is also often a wonderful way to collectively share the experience and help to mitigate the anger. Just being able to talk about it. Being able to talk about it with your healthcare providers like we're doing today, I think, is also an important step uh, toward acceptance. But mm -hmm. I must admit there are no easy answers. You know, the, the breast cancer support group has been just a tremendous help. Are there any support groups locally for lymphedema? There are, and they, and they vary community by community, and it's, it's up to individual patients to, um, to find such groups. There are several here on the peninsula, in, in speaking about the Bay Area and in the Bay Area in general. And I think uh, for those people that might watch this clip uh, throughout the nation, uh, there are resources to be found. It's important to um, seek avenues to find these support groups. Often, the place in which the breast cancer treatment has been given will know about whatever the resources may be, and I encourage patients to make use of those resources for information. There are other sources of information as well. 
There is the National Lymphedema Network, which provides resources for lymphedema care and other issues related to lymphedema, inclu including the purchasing of supplies. There is the Lymphatic Research Foundation, for which I serve as the scientific medical director, and that organization is working very much on the behalf of lymphedema patients to find better treatments, to find cures, to understand the basic biology of lymphatic disease, and I encourage all patients to become involved with that group as well. Uh, there are lymphedema chat rooms on the Internet. Uh, the Internet is a wonderful resource for information. Um, some of my friends with lymphedema, many of us led a very active lifestyle up until cancer, and now they're very nervous about um, activities that'll, you know, cause a flare-up with the lymphedema. What do you advise? My biggest advice is that um, once you get to call yourself a breast cancer survivor, you have a God-given gift to be alive, and I think it's very important to be alive and not put major boundaries on what that living means to you. It is true that there is a small finite risk of lymphedema either appearing in somebody at risk or getting worse in somebody who already has it. But I think if one takes the appropriate precautions, those risks are pretty small. And I think um, beyond that, it's very important for patients, activity by activity, setting by setting, to weigh the risk-benefit ratio, which is something that we do every day in medicine. Okay. So there's a small finite risk that the lymphedema will get worse if, for example, you decide to go surfing or if you decide to go rock climbing. Uh, but you have to weigh how important it is for you to have that experience or continue to have that given experience in your life and try to proportionate the two. Having said all of that, it is very important to go through the appropriate treatment it is very important to assiduously use the garment that's provided, particularly during the activity that puts you at risk. It's very important to have surveillance, which doesn't mean putting yourself in a plastic bubble, but watch your arm. And if it looks like something's changing, let somebody take a look at it and take all precautions, particularly against infection, wherever that can be avoided. Again, don't wrap yourself in saran wrap, but yeah. live your life watch and wherever it's possible to be careful, be careful. When you go outside, put on a sunblock because sunburn can aggravate lymphedema. When you're in the kitchen, be careful. When you're in the garden, be careful. Wear gloves uh, if you're going to have a possibility of skin breaks. Um, but what you want to lift, lift. What you want to do, do. And where you want to go, go. Just be careful. Thank you very much. Well, great. Thanks for your questions.